Manchester United have controversially lost away against West Ham United and the United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. West Ham United 2, Manchester United 1. A game of two halves, you could say. Jekyll and Hyde are back once again to showcase the good, bad and downright ugly. It was a first half where, from a West Ham perspective, things may have gotten out of control. Cappy, you spoke about Lopetegui's call for consistency from a defensive standpoint, and it was everything but that. We were gifted so many opportunities, hitting the crossbar from early Alejandro Garnacho, forcing a couple of saves out of Lucas Fabianski. The two key opportunities that I saw for myself were firstly Alejandro Garnacho's second strike on goal, where it's good combinational play, from Rasmus Hoyland and Bruno Fernandes and he's played in the Argentinian opens up his body and tries to curl the ball around Fabianski but fails to get any sort of curvature the second and most damning miss came from Diogo Dallo hey oh hey. my goodness my brother okay stop I pensar como aquele golpe no gol huh miss of the season is an understatement. Technique all wrong. Power and height as the ball aviated to Manchester Airport. I saw a CM's team near half time and I think it was speaking about Sod's Law. And it's not even like you can call it a jinx because ultimately we would have done it to ourselves or they yeah. would have done it to themselves. I can't associate with that. Miss after miss, total domination in the shots department and to not have taken at least one was criminal to say that West Ham team looked disjointed defensively was an understatement but they also showed signs as the half progressed of a team still capable of creating opportunities just need a boost in order to improve their execution that second half was an example of such thinking the game flipped on its head as if we suffered from deflation like a football and West Ham found much needed oxygen after being teased with endless suffocation. Teased because they never truly received the conclusion to United's attacking intentions. Hammers were knocking on the door, ascending and the home crowd felt such a momentous shift within the matchup. Mikel Antonio's good work and cross just behind Emerson right in front of Andre and Nana was just a warning sign. Unfortunately, the text wasn't bold enough to see from a distance. So when Crescencio Somerville reacted first to a Danny Ings miss kick to give West Ham a well-deserved lead in accordance to how our second half flowed, it didn't take a second for Eric Ten Hag's side to instantly start switching up the urgency gauge to extreme. Suddenly, we were on the ascendancy. Less than 20 minutes to go and I have to say, one thing you can agree with the manager about is the fact that this team will continue to fight when their backs are against the wall. Sure, you have to question, you have to question their methods of getting into those disadvantaged positions in the first place, but for at least 11 minutes, we re-emerged out of the rabbit's hole as Casemiro almost rescued the point. Keyword is almost. And here comes the controversy. Early into the 12 added stoppage time minutes, a contentious 50-50 challenge in my opinion takes place inside our area between Mateus De Ligt and Danny Ings. None appear to win possession of the ball initially, but there was contact from De Ligt inside the area. But Ings wasn't getting to the ball and, and didn't. Neither did the United Summer signing. And the interesting part about all of this is the on-field referee David Coote originally did not award a penalty for the incident, but Michael Oliver in VAR deemed that there was sufficient contact, thus suggesting for there to be an on-field review, and we all know what happened afterwards. I didn't think it was a penalty. I, I would say, on watching it again, I think it was. Did it does swing out the boot as Ings appeared to pull out of the challenge? It was a little careless in my opinion, after watching it again. Oh, look, fair enough, CM. But ultimately, was there a check for the subsequent handball after? 
No. Even before that, watch back the clip slowly and you realise that the lift touches the ball first with the side of his knee. I, I don't know. What, what did you guys think about the decision which culminated in Jared Bowen's dramatic winner? Snatching all three points away from Eric Ten Hag for the fourth time this season, by the way. We have more losses than wins in the Premier League. Let that sink in. 14th position. Already seven points off the top four as it stands. Leicester to come midweek in the League Cup and then a Chelsea assignment on Sunday. Enzo Maresca side are growing in confidence and quality. I've watched them a fair bit this season and... There seems to be stability being built behind a no-nonsense manager who sticks to his demands, knows what he wants and sets, sets up his side to play in a specific way that they've slowly understood more and more every single week. Another difficult fixture and even before that, what kind of conversations will be manufactured at the beginning of this week? We'll find out really soon. Let us know in the comments what you're feeling on Monday morning or whenever you watch us <laughs> deliberate about another shocking Manchester United result. One that even with the controversy stems from our lack of chance create, not even chance create, taking our chances and ability to control the game that was once ours. Make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, sharing to your friends and frenemies and until the next time, We'll see you lots in a...